To begin your wing build, as always, the very first step is going to be to unbox and inventory your entire wing kit thoroughly. This makes sure, of course, that you have all your components and nothing was damaged in shipping. It also gives you a great opportunity to separate out your left wing components from your right wing components, which I've got over there. Um, in addition to that, I've got the flaps, ailerons, and fuel tanks on the opposite side of this pegboard over here um, separated out as well. And so that just keeps the entire build process streamlined and organized so that you're not constantly looking for parts and you don't actually accidentally use a left wing rib on a right wing or, or so on. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to be filming the left wing construction. Uh, it has the added uh, steps of the pitot tube and this particular build has a heated regulated pitot tube. And so we'll show the installation steps for those components as well. Um, other than that, the entire build is just mirror images of each other. So the right wing is exactly like the left wing, uh, just without those couple added steps. So the first step of the assembly manual is going to have you assemble your wing uh, jigs. So we've got the tip jig and the root jig. Uh, essentially, the support braces on the tip jig cannot accidentally be installed under the root jig. The whole patterns here and here are slightly different, so you can't make that mistake on accident. Uh, essentially, all you have to do is make sure that your arrows are all facing up on both jigs, and you're using the left jigs, of course, for the left wing and right for the right. And these are very straightforward and, and uh, easy to construct. The next step is we've got all of our parts unwrapped, deburred, and uh, cleaned for the rear spar. As you can see, I've got them laid out as, as usual in the general orientation of the exploded diagram. And I will now begin clecoing and riveting these parts. And afterwards, I'll show a close up of which holes not to rivet and a couple of tricks that we're gonna use later on. Okay, so we have the rear spar riveted as far as we're gonna go for now. Um, there's a lot of holes that need to be left unriveted through this particular step. Uh, I always think it's best to take your Sharpie and just mark out all the holes that the manual says to leave unriveted. And that way it kind of takes the guesswork out of it through the assembly process. Um, another thing is the far root end, these five rivet holes here. If you rivet them now, they're going to interfere a little bit with your um, wing jig. So it's best to leave those unriveted for now and we can actually use those to further mount the jig uh, to the spar and we'll go back and rivet them at the very end. So another thing that I like to do is put my AN5 bolt first before riveting. Um, this just makes sure that that hole is gonna be perfectly aligned and you know it's gonna allow us to mount this easier to the jig and then of course ultimately to the plate at the very end. So another thing for this that makes it a lot easier down the line is to Clico on your um, trailing edge skin support brace here and it goes in all these holes here. Clico it on and then just trace it out to know which holes that this is gonna to use to mount to the rear spar. And then remove it, and we're actually gonna leave this off for a good, a good while right now. It's just gonna allow easier access to riveting the ribs on, and we don't have to deal with, with um, this kind of hanging off the edge of the plane as it goes like this, and so. You don't want to risk bending it or damaging it along the assembly process. Um, something to make note of on this is the far root end that mounts this. These use 4 by 12 millimeter rivets. Um, basically, they just have to be slightly longer to get through the doubler and tripler plate back over here. So I like to mark that out now as well. Uh, just because I am going to be leaving this off, it's just, once again, I don't have to go back and reference the manual when it's time to install this. So aside from that, I think we are ready to move on to the rib assemblies. A few things common to all of these ribs are, of course, they're all unwrapped, deburred, cleaned, and dimpled where necessary. So I'm not going to continue to mention that on each individual rib. Also, there are four grommets you can see on the top right there that I've already got installed. Um, you can choose to do this now, or they're perfectly accessible after they've been riveted to the spar. 
uh, either way is perfectly uh, accept acceptable, but uh, I just find it's easier on the left wing. You're going to fill up all the grommet holes with grommets, so I just think it's easier to do now. On the right wing, there's only a total of four grommets on the entire uh, assembly, so you know you can choose to uh, wait and see exactly where you're going to need to place those. On this particular rib, it's the bottom grommet that you're going to use on the right wing. Um, the only thing to make careful note of on this rib, as well as the next rib, rib six, is the flap torque tube assembly, uh, that, the black grommet there. All the holes need to line up perfectly, and you need to take special care when you're deburring and preparing that uh, mounting bracket to make sure you don't bend it or tweak it at all. Uh, that grommet, as well as the grommet on rib six, need to be perfectly aligned after the assembly is complete. Uh, to make sure that that flap torque tube is able to rotate freely without any binding. Rib 6 is essentially the same as Rib 1 and that the most critical component here is going to be your flap bushing uh, installation there. Uh, once again, just make sure all the holes are lined up properly and that there's no um, twisting or binding or kind of interferences within the assembly there and everything should be fine. Uh, in addition to that, we have a flap hinge bracket on the far right and uh, just make sure that the bend in that component is flaring slightly away from the rib um, and so in this orientation it's slightly upwards. Rib 7 is very straightforward. The bushing on this one is a aileron pushrod guide bushing. Uh, the pushrod does not slide very tightly through that bushing like it does with the flap control so the alignment is of course important but not nearly as critical as it is on the previous two ribs. Rib 14 is extremely straightforward to construct, and actually, after you've built this, you can go ahead and set it aside in a safe place. It's not going to be installed until much later, after the wing is removed from the jig. Rib 8 is again very straightforward. Um, once again, just make note of the bend direction of the control bracket, as shown in the manual. Rib 10 is very straightforward as well. Uh, you may want to make a note on ribs 8 and 10. Uh, they look very similar to each other, uh, just so you don't accidentally get them confused on installation. For rib 11, I find it easier to rivet on the wing brackets 2 and 3 onto the rib before installing channel on rib 11. Um, of course, leaving the five rivets top and bottom that are used to mount the channel to the rib uh, this is just for easier access to the two rivets, uh, top and bottom, that are very close to the uh, um, channel there. In addition to that, the manual says to use an AN415A bolt to hold on the bell crank assembly. Uh, a lot of the kits come with an AN413A bolt. Um, this is the correct bolt to use here for this application if your kit comes with a 13 instead of a 15. Um, remember to get your torque values for that bolt set to 5.7 to 7.9 newton meters, anywhere in that range is fine, and mark it with your torque seal, and this rib should be uh, complete and fairly easy to assemble as well. The next step is to countersink your main spar. There are a lot of holes that need to be countersunk, and it's very important to mark out where the holes change from 4.8 millimeters down to 4 millimeters and only countersink the 4 millimeter holes on each side, the top and the bottom of the spar. Um, it's important to keep the depth uniform across all the holes, so you're going to want a tool like this to set your countersink depth and keep it uniform down the whole spar. Um, if you have deeper and shallower countersinks, you'll cause waves in your skin and you don't want that. So after every couple countersinks, it's best to check with your rivet um, to make sure that the hole is the same depth. Uh, it's easy to tell visually as well, but just to be very certain that you're doing it properly, I like to check with a rivet along the way. The hole should be about exactly flush with the top of the rivet, if not just very slightly deeper. Uh, you don't want it too deep, otherwise you'll cause the skin to pull between the two countersinks as it pulls down too deep, and you don't want it to be too shallow and the skin just sits too high off the, off the uh, spar here. Uh, another trick is to tape down the center seam of where the spar has two sides. Uh, this prevents the chips from falling in here. Uh, sometimes they fall in and they're very difficult to vacuum out and uh, 
you know, it just keeps the process cleaner. And once you're done countersinking, we can remove this tape here. So the next page is going to be to just some dimpled detail for the rest of the ribs. Uh, I don't need to show that. It's very, very straightforward. Uh, so the next step here is going to be to mount the spar onto the jig and start clicking and riveting the ribs on. So now we've got the main spar attached to the jigs here. A couple things to make note of are the jig goes on the aft side of the main spar at the root and the forward side of the main spar at the tip. Um, a good tip here is rather than using the AN7 bolts, which are a very, very tight press fit through these spar holes, uh, use some high quality grade 8 7 16 bolts. Um, they slide through just slightly easier. Uh, there's less of that press fit. There's no slop. It's still a nice tight fit. So it's perfect for this jigging process. And uh, it just avoids having to tap through with a hammer your, your, your uh, AN7 bolts. Um, you don't want to drill those holes at all. They're perfectly sized right now for a really tight press fit. It's very critical that that's maintained for the final fit and installation of your wing. Uh, but for this part of the process, the uh, 7 16 bolts are uh, a little bit easier to use. So the next step is we're going to install rib 6, then 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Um, and that is because ribs 1 through 5 get really close together. And so if you do one at a time working from six down to one, you'll maintain access along the way to install those rivets. Um, after we've got ribs one through six installed, we're going to put this torque tube through for the flaps. And uh, you don't wanna have rib seven on because then you'll inhibit your access to install this torque tube. So let's go ahead and get that done. So now with ribs one through six installed, uh, of course, don't forget your three AN3 bolts. Um, two of them go to rib one to hold the fuel tank mounting bracket on my side of the spar here. And uh, one of them goes to the top of rib two here. So like I said, with one through six installed, we can slide through our flap uh, control rod. And you're gonna wanna check that for smooth motion. If there's a little bit of binding, it's okay. You can kind of play with the rib location and get it to be smooth. That should be fixed once we put our rear spar on. Um, so now we can proceed with rib seven all the way through 13 at the end there. And we're just gonna do one at a time, seven, eight, nine, 10, and so on, so that we're able to access the uh, rivets from the side here. And so let's get that done. Now that all of our ribs are riveted to the main spar, um, I have already, as you can see, installed my rear spar into position. I actually did it somewhere around just after rib 11 here. Uh, as you add more ribs, the structure gets a lot of flex from the, the torsion on the weight overhanging. And so just to kind of solve that issue, I, I went ahead and put my rear spar on to uh, lock everything in with rigidity again. Um, you could put the rear spar ahead of time, but it does get a little bit tricky kind of maneuvering the ribs into both channels. So uh, that's, that's the way I went about it here uh, because ribs 12 and 13 don't have all the extra mounting hardware and stuff. So they're really easy to squeeze in there. Um, as you can see also, I've got my trailing edge rib five clicked into position. And that's because I'm gonna do the same process as I did on the center ribs one through five. I'm gonna start on five, then four, three, two, one. Uh, just for access to those rivets. Um, and another thing to make note of is on rib 11 here, these support flange braces actually go inside the main spar flange. So uh, this one is below and the lower one is above. So both of them are inside the main spars flange. Um, another thing to make note of is on some of these ribs that have the second row of holes, um, the second row of three holes, if there's some misalignment between the five holes on the main rib part and then the added flange, make sure to use the Clecos and align your actual rib to the spar holes and you can clear drill the uh, extra support flanges holes. Um, that helps your skins lie perfectly flat. The, the rib does tend to have the better mounting position for those holes. So the next step I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and shoot all of the rivets on the rear spar this way and of course leaving off that center row of holes that goes down the whole thing 
Um, and after that, I'm going to install my uh, trailing edge support, skin support. So you've now completed the rib skeleton structure of your wing. Um, as you can see, I've got the trailing edge uh, skin support bracket on. Uh, only a couple things to make note of on the steps that I just got done. Um, the, these four uh, trailing edge ribs, uh, the middle three rivets on each one is a four by 12, so don't just get in the habit of using four by 10s everywhere, as well as the far root end of your trailing edge skin with those four by 12s that I mentioned earlier. Um, aside from that, the only thing to keep in mind is do not rivet the far three uh, rivets on your trailing edge support bracket here. Uh, those are right now being used to hold your jig in place. So if you accidentally rivet those, you'll be stuck to your jig. So that's it for this. And the next uh, step is going to be to put the skins on and that's going to be in the next video.